All right, in this video I'm going to talk about finding centroids and centers of mass. <clears throat> and all a center of mass is, so first off, suppose we have a curve y equals f of x. Um, that's the region, the, the, the function on the top. And then we have a curve y equals g of x. And the region is bounded in between these curves, the line x equals a and the line x equals b. So we get our little region. All a center of mass is, we're going to assume this is like maybe like a little piece of metal or whatever it is. We'll assume it's also uniform density. And the center of mass is just where you would stick your pen or your pencil um, underneath the object so that exactly it would balance. So imagine you had a record. Ooh, my, there's my bad record. The center of mass, you would just hold your pen right up the, you know, your pen, it, the, the, the record would balance right on the tip of your pen if you put the record obviously in the middle. So that's what we're trying to find here again is that center of mass. So the center of mass, um, or the centroid as it's known, it's easy to calculate really. You just use the formula. So first we have to find the area, and we've seen the area formula. It's just from A to B, x minus g of x, tops minus the top function minus the bottom. To get x bar, you take 1 divided by the area, and then instead of just doing f of x minus g of x, you actually multiply it by x. And then to get y bar, we take 1 over the area, and then we have to take one half, and then we take the function squared minus the other function squared. We take one half of all that quantity. All right, so let's do a concrete example here. Um, I may have to bust this up into a couple parts. So we want to find the centroid bounded by the region uh, y equals x squared and y equals 8 minus x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to graph it. Okay, so y equals x squared. <clears throat> we know what y equals x squared looks like. That's just our good old parabola. And then y equals 8 minus x squared is going to be a, a parabola facing downwards. Um, You could probably almost guess what the x bar value is. Um, so again, x bar is kind of the, the vertical line where this region would balance. It's symmetric, so it looks to me like it should end up, uh, x bar should be 0. But we'll calculate that just to make sure. So the first thing we'll do here is actually find the area. So the area in this case, well, the first thing we would have to do is actually find these points of intersection so we can come up with our limits of integration. So let's do that first. So to find the points of intersection, or the limits of integration, we'll just take x squared equals 8 minus x squared and solve this. Well, we can add x squared to both sides, get 2x squared equals 8. Divide by 2, we'll get x squared equals 4. Take the square root of both sides, and we'll get positive and negative 2 as the points of intersection. <coughs> Okay, so from here we can calculate now the area in between these two curves. So the area is simply going to be from, and what I'm going to do is, since it's symmetric, um, instead of going from negative 2 to 2, I'm going to take 2 times the integral from 0 to 2, just to make my computations a little easier. So it says we take the top function minus the bottom function. and we'll calculate this integral. So if you get rid of the parentheses, we'll get 8 minus 2x squared dx, and then when we integrate and calculate this, we'll get uh, 2 times, when we integrate 8, we'll get 8x, when we integrate 2x squared, we'll get 2x to the third over 3, and now we have to evaluate this from 0 to 2. Alright, so not too bad. So 8, so if we plug in our upper limit of the integration, we'll get 8 times 2, which is 16. If you plug 2 in, we'll get 2 cubed, which is 8, times 2, or 16 thirds. And then when we plug in our lower limit of integration, this is kind of nice, we'll just simply be plugging in a bunch of zeros, so we'll get 0 for our lower limit of integration. And if we simplify inside, uh, we could get common denominators, multiply top and bottom by 3, so we'll get 48 over 3 minus 16 over 3, which if we simplify, that's simply 32 over 3. 
And now if we multiply this by 2, we'll simply get that our area is 64 divided by 3. So we'll need this value because again we had to divide our um, we had to use it in both our x bar and our y bar formula. So I know I'm not going to have time to compute both of those in this video, so I'm going to cut this one off here and then we'll actually compute x bar, y bar um, in another video.